Rather than letting your equity sit stuck in your property collecting dust, instead you can access that equity to help you fund a renovation, build wealth, or pay for an education. In this video, I'm going to be discussing three different ways you can access equity in your home. Before we get into this video, please like, subscribe, share this video with a family member or friend as it'll help my channel grow and reach more Canadians learn about the mortgage and real estate industry. So like I said, I'm going to be discussing three different ways you can access equity that's built up in your home. I'll be explaining the pros and cons of each and kind of be determining which option is best for you based on your situation. So option number one is doing a refinance. Refinancing is a great option to accessing equity that's built up in your home while getting the lowest rates on the market. When you refinance, you're getting a whole new mortgage to cover off your current mortgage balance, any potential penalty and closing costs, and then you're left with the remaining equity. So for example, if you have a house that's valued at $800,000 with a mortgage balance of $200,000, that means you have $600,000 of equity built up in that home. Keep in mind, when refinancing, you can only refinance up to 80% of your home's value. So in the example I just mentioned above, you'd be able to take out a new mortgage for the maximum of $640,000 if you can qualify as your new mortgage. Subtract the remaining mortgage balance and you're left with $440,000 in equity for you to use. Now the pros of a refinance, you'll get the most favorable rates on the market. You can use this opportunity when refinancing to restructure your mortgage and potentially depending on the current rate environment, you could get access to better rates. Plus you can also use this opportunity to consolidate some debt into your mortgage. Some of the cons, number one is if if you're not at the maturity date of your current mortgage and you're refinancing, you will be charged a penalty because you're breaking your mortgage terms before the mortgage contract ends. If you already have favorable rates and current market rates are much higher and you're refinancing, you'd be subject to the new higher rates, losing your old interest rate. Now, the second way to access equity is through something called a HELOC. HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit. So a HELOC is a secured line of credit that's secured by your home. So you'll get better Better interest rates than let's say an unsecured line of credit. Pricing on a HELOC is based off prime and it's normally prime plus a percentage, usually prime plus one. Now you aren't getting as favorable rates as you would have with a refinance because a HELOC is readvanceable, so it is a little bit more risky for the lender. So they upcharge the rate to reflect that risk premium. But in terms of line of credits, HELOCs are the most competitive. HELOCs are registered in second position behind your first mortgage. And keep in mind with HELOC, you can only go up to 65% loan to value for the HELOC amount. Now with the HELOC, once you get approved for your HELOC, you don't have to advance the whole amount up front like you would with a refinance where the full amount's being readvanced. You won't start paying interest on the money until you advance the funds in the HELOC. So let's say you have access to a $240,000 HELOC, you're not paying interest on $240,000, but if you use 50,000 of that to fund some renovations in your home, you'll now be, be paying interest on the $50,000 you've advanced. And the loan to value of your property is based off the HELOC's limit, not what you have advanced. So even though you haven't advanced that full $240,000 HELOC, it still goes counts towards the loan to value of the property. Now some pros of a HELOC, you get access to a line of credit at a favorable rate. HELOCs are an open product, meaning you can pay it off in full at any time, no strings attached, meaning you won't have a penalty attached to it as you would with a normal closed mortgage. HELOCs are interest only payments required, meaning your payment on the HELOC money you've advanced will be smaller and you aren't breaking your mortgage to access this equity in a HELOC, it's going second position. So there's not that potential of you paying paying a penalty. And if you have a favorable rate in your first position mortgage, you keep you keep access to that rate. Now some cons of a HELOC. A HELOC, like I said, you would be getting charged higher interest rates than a normal mortgage if you like were to refinance your home. HELOCs are secured against your home, meaning you're putting your home at risk. Whereas unlike an unsecured line of credit, it's not secured against anything. A HELOC is secured against your home. So if you don't make your payments, you are putting your home at risk of the power of sale from the lender. Now the final way I'm going to be talking about to access equity is a second position mortgage. A second position mortgage keeps your first mortgage intact, but now registers a second mortgage behind that first mortgage. So for example, let's say you have a home valued at $500,000 and a current first position mortgage with a balance of $100,000. You can add a second position mortgage behind that $100,000 first mortgage for up to 80% of the home's value. So in this case, that would be a second position mortgage 
percentage of up to $300,000, totaling $400,000, which equals 80% of 500,000. So now on this one property, you'd have two mortgages registered against it. So what are the advantages of a second position mortgage? Well, the first advantage is you get to keep your first mortgage intact. So this is used a lot of times when you have a really good rate on your first mortgage and you don't want to break it. You'll be charged that penalty. You'll lose that rate. So adding a second position mortgage behind your first lets you keep that rate and avoids the penalty. Now some cons of a second position mortgage, usually on the A side, A lenders aren't gonna go, wanna go behind other A lenders. So for example, if you had a mortgage at Scotiabank and you wanted a second position mortgage, CIBC isn't gonna give you a mortgage to go behind Scotiabank. Only really Scotiabank will be willing to give you a second position mortgage behind themselves. So if your current A lender isn't willing to give you a second position mortgage behind your first position mortgage for whatever reason, your options are gonna be more limited and you might have to work on the B side to get access to that equity. And that would come with slightly higher rates and fees you'll have to pay. So hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of different ways you can access equity in your home. If you found any value in this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video with a family or a friend who you would think would benefit from seeing this video. Don't forget, I have those three free mortgage guides. The first is a first-time homebuyer's guide. That includes the guide to home ownership for first-time homebuyers, including what not to do and what to do, and then a first-time homebuyer's checklist. I also have a refinancing guide. So if you're watching this video, this process will possibly interest you. And if you're thinking of refinancing, read this guide first. And then the third is you found your dream home, now you need to obtain financing for it. So those guides are free, link in the description below. Finally, if you have any questions, comment them below. I'll be sure to answer any questions you may have. If you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me, I have my calendar link below. Go fill out a time slot and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have.